Hi there, my name is Deb. I am the founder of FineComb Here. We are greeted today on this lovely day with Donna, our FineComb Here partner this week. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, Donna, take it away. I will. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for your time on this Saturday afternoon. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to talk about this, and I thank Deb for inviting me to do so. I want to talk about how to find calm in your gut. And you might be thinking, what does my gut have to do with finding calm? Well, maybe you've also heard how we have a brain and gut connection. So we have that gut-brain connection. And there's two main reasons for that connection. Uh, one of them is called neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are chemical, uh, chemical signals between our nerves that let us know what's going on in our body from our body to our brain and our brain back to our body. And there are just as many neurotransmitters in our gut as there are in our brain, uh, which they didn't really necessarily know years and years and years ago that there was that the same amount of connection in our, in our gut. Another reason is the vagus nerve. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. So we've got cranial nerves that come out of our brain. And then we've got other nerves that come out of our spinal cord. And there's 12 cranial nerves. And one of those nerves is called the vagus nerve. And it is the longest nerve. It actually starts from behind your, the base of your skull. And it comes around, wraps around your neck, and comes down, which I'm back, comes down your chest and actually attaches to your heart and lungs. And then it continues to go down and attached to every organ in your digestive tract. So have you guys heard of rest and digest versus um, uh, fight or flight? Have you heard those differences? Have you heard of those phrases? Nobody? Okay, great. Well, or some have and some haven't. So in our nervous system, we have, our, we, have, we have little branches off of our nervous system. And two of those are called the parasympathetic and sympathetic. And our sympathetic nervous system is the one that is our fight or flight. So we see something dangerous, we see that tiger, we gotta run, our, we right away, our brain says, move it fast, react and go. So it's that fight or flight. Now in, in your everyday life, it's more so you're driving down the road, a car jumps in front of you in your lane and you have to react really quick. That's your sympathetic system taking over handling stress and doing what it needs to do. We need to have that, that system in place. However, they're finding that these days in our modern world, we do so many things. We're driving, we're getting here to there. We have this on our commitment and that in our commitment. We're eating quickly. Um, we've, we seem to have more stressful jobs. We're inside more than outside, which is more calming. And um, there's a lot of environmental toxins, too, that really stress our system. And when that happens, our other system, our sympathetic, our parasympathetic system, cannot rest and relax. And it is supposed to rest and relax so that it can rest and relax our whole body. In order to digest well, we have to be in that parasympathetic state. Um, if we are still stressed, if we're running here or there, which a lot of us do, we eat on the go, we eat at our desk at work instead of stopping and focusing on our food, we're eating quickly, you know, driving through, we're just very quick paced, we're not really resting and digesting, and that alone will affect our digestive system. So that vagus nerve comes and attaches to all of our digestive organs, and it actually is the one that rests and digests you. So if it's working properly, it's gonna relax your stomach for when that food is coming in. It also is responsible for communication back and forth to the brain. So if you've ever had a gut feeling about something, you truly are having a gut feeling. You're feeling something, and that, that feeling you're having is going back to the brain and telling you that you either, ooh, there's a good looking person and I'm excited to see them and I got the butterflies and that's a gut feeling and that's a communication. Or, oh, that food looks disgusting and all of a sudden your stomach kind of feels weird about the food that you're about to eat. That's, you know, gut feeling. 
or maybe even you're just stressed out and you feel that stress in your gut. Does anybody think they feel stress in their gut? Anybody at all? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I also feel it in the back of my neck. So it kind of depends. I, you know, people feel both things. My, my son, who's an adult, has a lot of stress in his gut and always has from since he was a child. That just seems to be where he holds it. And honestly, we all have a place where we hold it. For some, it might be our gut, others our neck, some are low back. Um, so pay attention to where you feel stressors. So anyway, let's see, going back. So I want to talk today about, about that gut brain connection and about how we can find calm. Because if we are stressed, if uh, our vagus nerve is overworked, if we're not eating properly, or we're not digesting properly, we can hurt in our stomach, we can have issues in there, but we also, there's a lot of co correlation between our moods and our stomach and brain. If you find that you have, you're have, you not handling life as well and you're sad or have anxiety or some depression, it definitely can be because there's a connection that's off between your stomach and your brain, and more than likely it's your gut that's not working properly. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask a few questions and I want you, you can either raise your hand, I'll probably raise my hand along with some of them. I just want you, or just think about, do any of these apply to you? So you just think in your head, do they apply? If you want to raise your hand, feel free. If you're kind of embarrassed to raise your hand about one of them, you don't have to. You guys but can also <laughs> write it in the chat or we can journal, right? No, pick journal. If you want to journal, that's beautiful too. So a couple questions about digestion and do any of these apply to you? Um, in the last six months, have you used antibiotics for anything? Or have you had to use them fairly regularly throughout your life? Maybe perhaps, okay, good, we got a thumbs up. Or perhaps on a yearly basis. Um, sometimes for some people it might be because they've had urinary tract issues or they've just been sick a lot, so they've had to use antibiotics. We'll get back to that. Do you tend to use over-the-counter pain medication like Tylenol, Advil, Aleve on a daily or weekly, but fairly consistent basis? Now, I'm not talking once a month when you have cramps or anything like that, but do you have headaches a lot and you're taking those almost on a daily or often? Um, do you bloat after meals? That, that was me, and I still can depending on what I eat. So do you bloat after meals? Do you often feel fatigued after you eat? Are you tired after you eat? Or are you tired a lot normally just throughout the day? Do you wake up not rested? That could be a digestive issue. Do you deal with constant chronic diarrhea or the opposite? Do you have constipation? I was the constipation person, the bloating and the constipation. <laughs> Fun talk, right? Do you have dark circles under your eyes? That can be a sign of know that you don't need a new night cream or day cream to cover it up, but you actually have some digestive issues going on. Do you have smelly breath or smelly gas? <laughs> Nobody wants to raise their hand for that one. <laughs> Do you have sinus congestion a lot or a post-nasal drip? I find myself sniffing a lot because I have that post-nasal drip. It could be allergies to outside environment or it could be allergic tension from foods that you're eating. Do you have a stressful life? Probably most of us do, maybe not. Um, maybe it's less stressed right now, I don't know. Are you guys less stressed? <laughs> I have definitely been less stressed. <laughs> yeah, or do you deal with anxiety, sadness, mood swings, things like that? So any of those topics, any of those items, any of those symptoms can relate to your digestion. Um, we don't always think of them relating to that. Maybe the constipation we do or the bloating, but some of those other ones we don't always think about. So I just want you to think about if some of those affected you, maybe we can figure out where the missing piece is. So I want to talk about now digestion and what's optimal with our digestion. Digestion is actually a north to south process. So digestion to be optimal first starts in our brain. So I want you to think about one of your favorite foods. It doesn't have to be a healthy one. It can be something that you just love to eat that you get excited about. And maybe put it in your chat. What do you guys like to eat? If I'm thinking unhealthy, I might think a chocolate chip cookie or pizza. 
but I also love roasted veggies. So <laughs> you guys have any favorite foods? What's something you just really love? Pasta. I like that too. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody get some favorites? Maybe chocolate or pizza? Yep. Me too, Marcy. <laughs> I do love a good pizza. Okay, so I want you potato ch chips, did I see? Or potatoes? Dark chocolate, yes. All the foods. <laughs> and I see oh, this <laughs> choy. I'm, I'm looking at it and it looks like chocolate, like uh, Ahoy chocolate chip cookies. That's what it made me oh. think of when she put okay choy. All I saw was <laughs> chocolate was chip bok choy. Is that what it's supposed to be? Bok choy. I love bok choy too, actually. <laughs> so think about that food for just a few seconds. Think about it, visualize it in your hand, whatever it is. Now, do you notice anything in your mouth? Anybody getting a little more saliva in their mouth? Do they notice that they might have to swallow? I always do the minute I think about something I want. So that's the first thing that has to happen in good digestion. We actually have to recognize the food we're gonna eat and look at it and get excited about it because then what happens is in our mouth, we increase saliva. That saliva is a good thing. There's an enzyme in it called amylase. And amylase helps to break down all the carbohydrates that we're eating. And carbohydrates being our vegetables, our fruits, our pasta, our pizza, our baked goods, potatoes, all, you know, all the things. So the veggies, fruits, and all the starchy carbs. But we need that amylase to start breaking down the food in our mouth. If we chew too quickly, if we don't stop to recognize this wonderful meal we have in front of us, if you're someone who prays before meals, that's a good time to just kind of slow down, say a prayer and before you eat. Or maybe just if you're not a praying person, but you just want to look at that plate and go, oh boy, I'm excited. Thank you for this food, whoever made it. And just take a moment to enjoy looking at it before you eat it. And then when you begin to eat it, I want you to start slowing down. We all have become very quickly uh, very quick to eat our food. Some of it's lifestyle. We maybe are only given 20, 30 minutes at work to eat or we're rushing here to there. But I want you to do your best to slow down. I want you to put that food in your mouth and the next time you eat after this is over, I want you, the next thing you eat, I want you to take a bite, slow down if you're by yourself or you're not in an embarrassing place to shut your eyes. I want you to shut your eyes and actually chew it for a minute and think about how does it taste. Is it salty? Is it sweet? Is it crunchy? Is it slimy? Is it whatever, whatever texture or taste it is? I want you to actually slow down and actually taste it because we've gotten so quick on eating. Is there any fast eaters in this group? Got one, one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be fast. I've learned to slow myself down. Um, and there's times, you know, you can't help it. If you're in the car eating and you're on the go, what I've had, what I try to do when that's my situation is I just try to take a bite. And let's say it's a sandwich, I try to take a bite and put it down on the seat and actually think about what I'm chewing while I'm driving versus just cram, 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 and not think about it. So start doing better about slowing down, chew, 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 because we need that enzyme in our mouth to start breaking down our food. Hey, yeah, yeah. I had a quick question. Do you yeah. want to do some breakout rooms to go through some of these questions that to do like a one on one or what are your what are your thoughts as far as like um, sharing and things maybe, like that? I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts? Let me finish the digestion north to south first, maybe. Okay. And then we can kind of see on time because I do want to show everybody how to do a massage. So I'm not sure on our time. Okay. So maybe after maybe afterwards. Cool. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, I love that idea, though. So, and, I, and the reason I'm telling you guys all this because it's super important. If things aren't working up north, they're not going to come out smoothly down south. <laughs> so they've got to work for, and we're not going to absorb all our foods correctly. So then that food goes down our esophagus into our stomach. And in our stomach is where we actually need, does anybody... Does, do you guys realize we're actually supposed to be very acidic in our stomach? Um, it's a misinformation that we should not be acidic in there. The, the overuse of antacids, which that could have been a question, if you use antacids a lot, it's going to be a problem in the long run for you. So 
Our stomach needs to be acidic because that's how it breaks down and burns and churns our food in our stomach. And we also need that acid to kill the bad bacteria, the bad bugs that are in our stomach. So if we are not acidic, we're more prone to um, flus and colds and illnesses, perhaps even skin breakouts and things like that. And we're not going to break down and properly burn and churn that food. And what's, why that's super important is because before, after it leaves our stomach, it goes into our small intestine. And there's a little flap between the stomach and the small intestine. And that flap is kind of like, oh, heck no. That food, you're not allowed to come here because you haven't been burned and churned enough. And so the small intestine is like, I don't want you. So what happens if we don't have enough acid is two things. We either might have that food sit there and ferment and it ferments up and we get acid indigestion or we bloat and look seven months pregnant. That was me. I would look very, I would look pregnant depending on what foods I had. What is the flap called? That one is called the, uh, it's the, um, the gastric, uh, we're totally forgetting. <laughs> The one between the small and large intestine is ileocecal valve, but right off the bat, who asked me that? I'll get back to you, whoever asked. Jessica, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, but there's flaps between each organ and they do their job appropriately. So we need, again, we need that acid to burn and churn us. And if it's not there, the food sits there longer than it should and it ferments. But then three to five hours later, we want to eat again. So we introduce more food and finally the small intestine goes, okay, I give up, just come on down. I'll take the food even though it's not properly, you know, acidic and burned and churned. When the food goes into the small intestine, that's when the small intestine goes, woo, hey, bile, come on in. Hey, other enzymes, come on in and help me break down this food even further. But if the food comes in from the stomach not acidic enough, the small intestine, it doesn't turn on that alarm to bring bile and bring enzymes. Does that make sense? And so then it comes, that food comes into our small intestine and it isn't given the nutrients it needs to break down even further. And it's in that small intestine where we break down and digest about 90% of our food. If you've heard of leaky gut, that's where leaky gut is, is in our small intestine. And leaky gut happens because our small intestine is lined with all hair, it's called villi. And these villi help to move the food along our small intestine. But the food has to come into the small intestine all broken up in small pieces so it can move along. But if it comes in like big rocks, it breaks some of those little hair-like projections and then we have big holes and the big particles of food that include bacteria get into our blood system. And that's where we have immune issues, skin issues, dark circles, um, fatigue, things like that. So we need our food to be properly burned and churned in our stomach so it can pass through our small intestine. From the small intestine, it goes to the large intestine. The large intestine does about 10% of the digestive work. That's where our body reabsorbs fluids from the food and makes a nice feces for elimination. And then also some of our B vitamins um, are kind of re, reintroduced there and remade in our large intestine, but we need fiber for that to happen. So that's kind of north or south. I don't know if anybody has any questions about that. Um, does anybody know if they've got issues in their stomach, like low acid or have taken a lot? Of, I used to take antacids all the time until I learned what they were doing. And then I switched and I took enzymes. And we talk, we'll talk a little bit about the end. I switched and took enzymes and I took a, a stomach acid that you take to help with all that. And a lot of my issues have improved. Okay, I was gonna ask you about that, but yeah. we'll continue. Yeah, okay, well, maybe or maybe at the end. It's a lot of information. So. It is, I know, sorry. I just feel like it's super important. So <laughs> we 
<laughs> we kind of get it. But anyway, um, I'm going to turn my computer down here a little bit. I want to explain here better, and maybe it'll be too hard. I was maybe going to draw on myself, but it might just be easier to show you. I will show you my tummy. I want you to understand where things are. Everybody thinks the stomach is here. Our stomach is actually up in this area, right in here. Actually, I will kind of draw it. So it starts, it's on your left side. It starts above your ribs. It comes down, I don't know if you can see that, below your tummy, up, there's that valve there. And then it kind of swoops around. So it kind of looks like a kidney bean. Can everybody see that? Yeah, we, we see it. Thank you. Okay. That vagus nerve I talked about attaches all along this side here. And it's the vagus nerve that helps us to relax. So that's why I'm going to show you how to do some massage on your stomach, but also how to massage all the other areas. After that, at this valve right here, this is where the small intestine wiggles all all around, all around our stomach, until right about here, halfway between our hip bone and our belly button, there's the valve between the small and the large. And then the large kind of dips down. We have our appendix right there. It goes up. It's thicker but shorter than the small intestine. It dips down, goes down. This will be fun getting all this off of me down and out. So now it's a mess, but i kind of give you an idea because we're going to talk about clockwise massage and why that's important. And then also on this right side, real big is our liver and it's underneath our right rib and kind of takes up this whole space. It's huge. And behind it, there's the gallbladder. Anybody have their gallbladder removed? No, I'm good. <laughs> Glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Um, that's a whole other story, but I'm glad you, everybody has that because if you don't, then it is hard to make that bile to break down your fats. Anyway, so as you can see, our whole tummy has a lot of digestive organs all running through it. So I'm going to talk about abdominal massage and how that can help you find calm in your stomach because it's a great way to get you into a rest and digest system. And you can do a little bit before you eat. You can do parts of it after you eat. Sometimes in the morning when I wake up and I'm feeling maybe a little anxious or nervous, I'll stay in bed and I'll massage my stomach. And it's amazing how it really calms me down. Um, also, if you're somebody who has a little gas or bloating, Sometimes I just massage my large intestine. And as long as I'm in the privacy of myself or you know, my home, it'll help get some gas out and, and you know, give you relief in your stomach. So I, I wanna show you guys all these. So I'd love for everybody to join along with me. You, can, you don't have to pull your shirt up or anything. You can work right on top of your clothes. Can everybody see kind of my abdomen this way? All right, I want everybody to take their hands and I want you to go over to the left, your left rib cage and kind of find the bottom of your rib cage. And just kind of right below it from here, angling to your tummy. And I want you to just kind of slowly kind of feel in there. Kind of let your belly be, you know, jiggly if you have a jiggly belly. Let it be jiggly, let it relax. And I want you to find, and it actually can be easier lying down, but for now, since we're all mainly sitting, so feel free to lie down if you want to. I want you to kind of feel in there to the left, kind of more to the left, and then somewhat in the middle, and see if you can feel anything that kind of feels like a water balloon. Just slowly push right and left. It should feel a little bit like a water balloon. I'm just doing it just then. <laughs> oh yeah, you're noticing that you tightened up. I know, try to relax. You know, if you wanna pop up your screen so we don't see your tummy or if you wanna lie down, feel free. Yeah, and see if you can relax back there. And just feel and push back and forth. 
and give it a little massage. Again, there's no really right or wrong other than just, I like to kind of go back and forth, almost like I'm pushing it, kind of like push it this way, push it that way. And go down closer to your belly button and give it a little jiggle there. And relax it. Okay, so next we go to the small intestine. The small intestine, really the easiest way to know about your small intestine is, here's your belly button. Here, I'll do it here. Here's your belly button. It mainly is all around your belly button, wiggling all around there. So I like to start kind of in the upper left. Here's my belly button here. Kind of start up there and just take two fingers or so and massage in a circular motion around your belly button, clockwise. So down the left side and across. And again, this is smaller, kind of more inside. How's that feel, everybody? Anybody have any tenderness? Sometimes I do, I can feel some stuff. And, and if you feel any tenderness, you can always stop and just kind of hold it or move it around a little bit more. You can do more just like nice circles where you're not pushing, but just nice circles. And just give it a little bit of a love. All right, now find your hip bone on your right side, your belly button, and go about halfway in between, it's kind of angled. Right about there is that ileocecal valve. That can get gunked up on people. That's the little valve between the two and sometimes it'll get gunked up. So start there and just stay there and kind of massage around there. If you know muscles, that's also where we sometimes can find that psoas muscle, which is a hip flexor muscle, which causes pain in our low back. Often I find uh, clients with low back pain also have digestive issues. There's an interesting correlation there. All right, and now what I want you to do, our large intestine, if you wanna look here, goes up the right side, it goes down across, excuse me, across your body and then down the left. So I just kind of like the small intestine, but I'll use two hands. I'll kind of massage with two hands in little circular motions. You can find, you can actually feel your small, uh, excuse me, large intestine. It's gonna be inside your hip bone. So here's my hip bones. It's gonna be inside because all of our organs are inside of our bony structures. So even if like, like for example, me, some of my hip tissue is on the outside, my bones here, my large intestine is right on the inside. You might feel like a water hose, the long water hose. That's your large intestine. If you're not sure if you're feeling it or not, it's okay. Give it some love. Work your way up to the right rib. Come across. When you're going across, if it feels easier just to kind of go up and down, you can do that if it's easier on your hands. Now when you get to the left side, go down towards your left hip, inside of your hip. And then at the very end, you can kind of just stroke kind of their lower pelvic region. You can stroke down, you can stroke up. I've been trained that if you stroke down, it's more helpful with your digestion. If you kind of stroke up, if you've got period cramps or any tummy cramps, sometimes it helps with cramps, low cramps. So there's no wrong or right, just kind of give it a little love. So again, just giving that stomach love. Back and forth, side. Now go around your belly button. And while you're doing that, I want you to kind of visualize, you keep going, everything I drew on here, kind of visualize your stomach, visualize all the wiggliness of your small intestine, and visualize that garden hose going up, over, and down. 
All right, we're also going to give our liver a little love. The liver does a lot of work. It has to basically filter every toxin we present it, <laughs> whether it's creams or the air quality or foods we're eating. So just use your left hand, reach across to your right, grab, kind of just stroke across your rib cage and give it some nice love. And then another thing you can do if everybody's sitting or if you're lying down now, I think a few people might be lying down, find your right, the bottom of your rib cage, walk your fingers down, maybe just an inch or two. And then I want you to lean over and kind of allow, see if you can feel something drop into your fingers when you lean over. That's your liver. And if you kind of feel something drop in your fingers, I want you to just kind of support it and push it back up. Anybody feeling their liver? Oh, good, everybody's down, that's good. Deb, do you feel your liver? Uh-oh, did I lose everybody? No, we're, here. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we're just really into it. Okay. Thank you for us, Donna. Might have to refresh. Uh, All right, sorry guys, Donna looks like she froze. We're gonna give her a minute, hopefully she'll come back to us. <laughs> she's, or she's really massaging in that one location. <laughs> How's everybody doing while well, while she comes back? Uh, how's that feeling? Good. Donna, come back to us. Oh, we completely lost her. Okay. While she while she comes back, what I will say is we are uh, we launched the Find Calm Here community uh, this week. This weekend, uh, yesterday, we had a virtual summit. Uh, did anybody get check out the virtual summit or the replay? Were you guys on? I know Stephanie was on. Um, so I'm going to shoot you guys a link in the chat bar, and that is the replay. You have to register with your email, but you can watch the replay. It's literally, it's four hours. We had Steph. Do you remember how many Stephanie? Do you remember how many partners we had on? I do not, but we had a lot. Yeah, there was about 15 partners we had on the Find Calm Here uh, virtual summit. It was about, um, we had the partners introduce themselves and then they they basically just talked about what they're sharing in the community, in our private community. Stephanie's a part of the Find Calm Here community and she is a VIP actually, right Steph? <laughs> so um, we've been going through our welcome week program and we are at the point of where we're setting goals and connecting with people inside the community in our um, program. Um, do you want to ch chat just a little bit about that until she's coming back? Um, sure. So yeah, in the community we've just been, like Deb said, each week doing something different. So identifying goals, clarifying, um, setting up small steps, and then checking in with each other. And I think we'll be just continuing that throughout the next few months. And I've also been attending most of these weekly events. And it's been really cool just seeing like how different things can relate to Calm. And we have some really cool events coming up too. Um, I think there's a one with breath work coming up soon. Yeah, next Saturday is breath work, uh, next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and then we're going to be um, doing, I'm trying to remember what all I just booked for July. Let me, give me one second. I know there's a few, like, travel things coming up. Donna's going to, I asked her to come in with her cell phone because she said she's having a hard time reconnecting. Texas must not be a, a friendly place for... He's doing so well, too. <laughs> what? He's doing so well. I know, because she, well, she said she moved to this Pilates studio so that she could have a better signal. Oh, uh, no. 
Where's everybody? Uh, Jessica, you said you're from New Jersey. Uh, I said Priscilla's from uh, the Harrisburg area. Um, I know Marcy's from the Harrisburg area too. Dana, where are you from? Uh, hold on one second. Uh, we usually don't have technical problems like this. The first time we've ever had, we've done ten, almost 10 of these events now. That was the most uh, technical part, she says. Okay. Um, all right, I am going to send you guys over the replay for the virtual event the virtual summit that was yesterday. We had partners come on and they were talking about um, finding calm in their expertise. We had um, about 16 partners come on. We have two people from Australia in the community as a partner. Their Freddie is coming up. Ah, Freddie is coming up in the beginning of July. His is finding calm with podcasts. Uh, we have, let me look at the list. And then I think we're just going to have to, Donna's saying she's not going to get back in. She's not able to come back on. So we might have to um, reschedule this. She said that was the most technical part. What shall I do? Uh, and then we'll see if we can get her back on it. Uh, maybe another time. Um, let me go back to here. But yeah, we had uh, we had Nick on. He was talking about finding Cobb with adventure. We had, um, who else is on? Rachel. Rachel's story. She's in um, North Carolina. She is actually an online teacher. So she was talking about finding calm um, with an online business. Um, she is in our uh, group called Location Indie, which Stephanie is also in. And that's been, she said, trying again on the computer. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get Donna back here so we can finish up the, and ask, oh, here she comes, yay, asking the question. This is so fun. This is the first time we've had 10 events and I've never had uh, the pro Nick, Nick, when his event happened, we just had a little bit of a tech thing, but then he came back. Yay, Donna's back. <laughs> oh, oh, Marcy had to leave. No problem. Did I lose some people? Bummer. Yeah, yeah, Marcy had to go, but um, on, to, on we're still here. The rest of us are still here. We were hanging oh, on for you. <laughs> I know, saying sorry, God. I don't know what happened. I have no idea why. I had to end up switching to my internet on my house next door. It's coming in better than the one here. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I want to go back. I um, want to everybody to, I hopefully, how, what did everybody think about their massage? What did you think? Good. How did it feel? Good. Anybody feel relaxed? Yeah, Good. I know I felt for sure. Um, so doing that whole routine, I like to do it in the morning when I wake up or if I'm having a hard time falling asleep at night, it's a really good time to just give your stomach some love. It'll help to calm yourself down. It'll get that vagus nerve to do what it needs to do to rest. Um, again, if you are having some tummy pains, sometimes just massaging that large intestine, so kind of going up the outside and over and down can kind of help move things along. If you struggle from constipation, you might, again, kind of feel for things. And if you feel a little bit of a hardness, that could be where you're kind of stuck and bound up and you can massage it and see if that'll help move things along in the next couple hours, you know, get things to move along. So it's a great way to help with digestion. It's a great way to find calm, especially before bed or when you wake up in the morning. If you're about to do a big meeting or a big presentation I encourage you to just maybe give your tummy a little love you know whether it's just flat hands just kind of rubbing on it or doing some of the techniques that we did it'll help to calm things down and then another way to, to calm down your vagus nerve is just to take your fingers behind your neck so if you want to do that with me and just nicely stroke around Kind of about medium pressure around your neck just down to your collarbone and just kind of like give it a little love if you're somebody who enjoys using essential oils you could dab a little bit on the back of your neck and then just kind of drag it down to the front of your neck 
So if you have any favorite essential oils that relax you, lavenders or whatever you know you enjoy, that's a good way to kind of relax that vagus nerve. Or just put a little bit right at your hairline, right at the neck. And that's a great place to kind of tell your vagus nerve, hey, we need to calm down. Another thing that helps if you're feeling a little bit stressed and you want to calm down the vagus nerve is humming. Humming will activate the vagus nerve to kind of do its job. So if you can think of some favorite songs, you know, just hum it instead of singing it. So hmm, 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 whatever song you like, hum it at a pretty, I mean, if you're not in a public place, hum fairly loudly to feel that vibration in your throat. That is actually helping to activate that vagus nerve to do what it needs to do. Other things are gargling with just water or salt water. Gargling pretty aggressively, you know, getting that water in there, gargle, 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 gargle. That communicates with the vagus nerve to kind of wake up and do what it needs to do. I find when I'm working and I'm kind of getting, like I'm working on a computer and I'm like, ugh. I gotta meet this deadline and I gotta do that. I start how to try. And then foods that'll calm your stomach. Uh oh. I lose you guys again. No, you're here. I hear you. All right. I had some boxes open, so I was slow. I closed my boxes and now it's better. There we go. It kind of took it away. It took my screen away. Foods that can be helpful if you've heard of bone broth or any kind of broth. It can be from, you know, chickens, vegetables, beef, whatever, you know, foods you like, but make it a broth. Uh, it's very helpful um, for, for supporting your gut lining and very nourishing. Aloe vera gel that's in liquid form, aloe in a liquid form, very, very nourishing to the stomach. You can get aloe at almost any store these days. Any of your main food stores will have it. It doesn't taste too bad. And sometimes they put it with mint too or something to, to perk it up a little bit. But I love aloe vera for healing your stomach, especially if you're somebody who had or has um, some acid reflux issues, that aloe vera is very nourishing and soothing. Some prebiotic, you've heard of probiotics. Well, prebiotics are super helpful. And foods that are a prebiotic, and that's uh, things like sauerkraut, Kombucha is nice if you can tolerate kombucha. Some people it might actually they have a hard time with it, but if kombucha feels good and tastes good, try that as a prebiotic. But like I like I said, kombucha. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice way to kind of give your stomach a little bit of love because it's been fermented, so it has it has a lot of those prebiotics that we need to add good healthy bacteria back into our gut. Um, lemon, fresh squeezed lemon in your water is really good for your liver. So give your liver some love. Um, if you happen to have a few drinks or a glass of wine the night before, start your next morning with some nice lemon water to give that liver a little bit of help. <laughs> yeah. it's going to detox out, you know, or if you had a heavy meal the night before, you know, give your liver a little bit of love. Sometimes I make um, a drink with fresh lemon water, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and if you need to sweeten it just a smidge, I might put a drop of stevia or just a smidge of honey in it and make, and then some sea salt, because that gives you minerals, and that makes a nice kind of healthy lemonade. Ooh. I can try to, maybe put that recipe up on our, on our membership or something. Yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, share that in the community that would be great um, and then apple cider vinegar. sometimes apple cider vinegar but do not drink apple cider vinegar plain because it can burn your throat <laughs> but taking a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in four ounces of water and drinking that before meals can help if you're somebody who deals with bloating and constipation and kind of that tummy pain okay Foods like pineapple and papaya, they have digestive enzymes that are very helpful. So you can enjoy a little bit of those before your meals or after your meals. Uh, 
Digestive bitters, I brought some along. Digestive bitters are a liquid. This one happens to be in a little spray, so I can carry it in my purse. But bitters, you just put under your tongue before a meal. Bitter is one of the, you know, the five. Oh, we're losing, yes. That we have. There we go. Uh oh. Okay. We don't eat a lot of bitter foods anymore. There it goes again, unstable. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't eat a lot of bitter foods anymore, but the bitter helps to activate our digestive juices. So unless you're somebody who eats a lot of dandelion greens, or I'm trying to think what else is bitter. I mean, you know bitter when you taste it. Um, grapefruit has a little bit of bitterness to it. Um, it's good to get, di uh, um, excuse me, to get the um, bitters because it's easy to do. You can either spray a little bit in or drop it. And maybe I'll also on our website list some things that you can get at the store. And it will help to stimulate our digestive juices before we eat to kind of help that stomach do what it needs to do. So that's an easy one to do. Um, probiotics in general, this is a, just one of the probiotics I like. That's really good for our large intestine to give it the bacteria it needs to do its job. I have my little props, I have my lemons. Ginger, anybody eat ginger here? I love ginger. Um, I like to get it fresh. I'll cut pieces and eat it. I'll make a tea with it, slice it. Um, the eating it really helps my stomach. The ginger tea is very soothing and nourishing to your stomach. Uh, you can also buy ginger juice that's already kind of juiced and ready to go. I have that too if I just want to be lazy and put some of that with lemon water and drink it. And then there's a tea, company right? called Urban Moonshine. I'm going to put it in the chat here. Yes, that I found. That's a great, that's a great bitters company. I love them. I love them. Teas, nice teas that are good or anything with ginger, turmeric, lemon, or mint. Very soothing to our stomach. A nice way to finish your night to have a tea, um, a cup of tea with ginger, turmeric, mint, or lemon in it, or any combo. It calms everything down, calms you down. If you want to put a little chamomile in there too, for that calming. And then CBD. We've all heard a lot about CBD. CBD. We have an endocannabinoid system. It's a, a communication system, and CBD knows exactly where to go in your specific body, whether you have pain issues or digestive issues or anxiety. CBD is actually very good for calming and good for digestion and anxiety. So you can do it liquid, you know, maybe get with somebody who knows more about CBD. Liquid or topical can be very helpful. Um, a topical CBD rubbed on your stomach. If you're having tummy pains or uh, period cramps, can be very relaxing. And then one other thing I like to recommend is collagen protein. Does anybody use collagen protein? It's tasteless. You do, Deb? It's tasteless. You can mix it in coffee. This is one of the brands I like, Vital Proteins. There's also one called Great Lakes. And it's tasteless. It's ground up from the bones and cartilage of animals. So if you are vegan, you won't want to do this. But um, if you're not vegan, this is a great way to get more protein into your system. But collagen is our most abundant, excuse me, our most abundant, um, ah, losing my, my brain today. It's our most abundant, ah, well, besides, that <laughs> it's our most abundant protein in our body it's really good for skin it's good for nails it's good for your hair but it also is very healing to our digestive tract so i really like collagen collagen is actually found in bone broth animal bone broth like chicken and beef that's why beef that's why bone broth is really helpful so anyway that's and you can put collagen in coffee how do you use it, Deb? You um, use I have used it in the past. I had okay. it in my smoothies at some mm -hmm. points. 
Um, yeah. I haven't, I actually haven't used it for a while, but I, I was yeah. using it there for a while. I was trying different things because I've had a lot of gut issues. Um, yeah. And I it, continue to have some gut issues. So yeah, yeah. we'll have to talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's easier to digest than, than some of the waivers of people. And we didn't really talk about it, but there are certain foods that can cause people some, am I losing you guys again? That can cause digestive upset. And some of those are the gluten food, the foods with gluten in them, like pasta, breads, baked goods, D uh, dairy foods, like ice cream and milk and cheese can bother people. Or some people can eat cheese, but not the milk and ice cream. And then sugary foods can inflame our gut too. So I always encourage people to pay attention when they eat a meal and pay attention to how you feel after that meal. Do you feel nourished? Do you feel good? Do you feel energized? Or do you feel bloated and tired? And if you feel bloated or tired or have some acid, then pay attention to what it is you ate. And maybe right now that's not a good choice for your body. I'm not saying it's forever not going to be a good choice, but maybe for a while while you heal your stomach, it might be a food you have to avoid. Gluten for me is something I don't do well with, so I try to avoid it. But every once in a while, I treat myself to pizza or some, you know, some kind of pasta or baked good, but I know that I might be a little bloated afterwards. So I don't mind that once in a while. I just don't want to feel that way every day. Inflammation in your gut can make you feel about three to five pounds heavier. It's amazing if we eat foods that feel better, we'll lose three to five pounds of inflammation <laughs> and just feel lighter just from getting rid of that. If you feel lighter, you usually feel more energy. You have more energy, you feel better overall, feel more calm, you know, overall. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Deb, did anybody have any questions or anybody want to talk about something we didn't talk about or was the information helpful? I thought so, for sure. Well, There's a I lot. Actually, I have a question. Um, yeah. So you had mentioned briefly, like sometimes we'll take some medicine when it's that time of the month. Like we'll have yeah. cramps or whatever the symptom is for that. So what do you recommend? Because I've heard different things with this. Like, so I have um, PCOS, so I take birth control to try to like limit the okay. symptoms. But then I hear like it's not really that good for your body like long term. But if I don't take it, I really have bad symptoms. So what's like a good natural solution to help me with my situation? Sorry, guys. I don't know where Donna went. Are you seeing her? Yeah, Is I see her, but I don't hear her. I don't hear her either. Donna, come back. <laughs> we see yeah. her. Donna, come back to us. So, you're being, I'm going to sit down. Being that you have okay. time to pick up. Okay, we started to hear you. Is it better? Back? Okay, yeah. Now we My can back? Mm -hmm. My back? Yes. This internet. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You might you might be better just turning your video off. Maybe too. I'll give you guys my email. You can always ask any questions. Okay. Yeah. We might Is that have helping? To... Yes. yes I'm awesome. Real real quick, I'm gonna drop my email in case anybody has specific question in case I lose you guys again, so. Yeah, thank you, Donna. Priscilla. So are you asking like, what are some natural pain relievers? Yeah, like what do you recommend? I've heard different things and I just wanted to get okay. your take on it. Great question. Um, natural pain relievers that I really like, number one, are something called proteolytic enzymes. And I can always type that in. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, let me do that. I actually brought some with me. 
That's kind of the fancy name. Proteolytic enzymes are protein eating enzymes. These are the type of enzymes you would look for in there. Hold on. Those are some of the enzymes that if you find a bot, if you go to the digestive section and you're like, in where the vitamins and minerals are at stores. Just a section, you're going to look for, oh, I have my video on. Can we, can we try? You're going to look for something on the label that's the, all those things I listed. Digestive enzymes, though, you want to use two different ways. If you take them with food, if you take them with food, they're helpful for overall digestion. If you take them in between meals, and before bed or when you first wake up in the morning, it actually goes in there like little Pac-Man and, and kind of works its way through your body and finds that inflammation, finds that pain, and helps kind of eat it up and chomp it up and remove it. I've had amazing success with proteolytic enzymes post-surgery. I didn't have to take prescription pain meds. I've had other people use it. There's a lot of research out there on healing injuries with proteolytic enzymes. It's an easy way for you to, to try to see if that would help. Other things that work, and I'm gonna type all of these in. Boswellia, white willow, these are all herbs. These are natural, um, as nature's aspirin. So they're wonderful to use. Omega-3s. So your fishes, eating more fish can be super helpful. Also, I want you to look up seed cycling. And what that is, is eating certain seeds, and I forget the order of it because I always have to look it up. Like, the first part of your for the first 14 days of your cycle eating pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and the second and you eat like a little spoonful of it it has done amazing help for people with cramps pcos and and, and hormone issues related been, to your period i had tried this last year and i want to try this again yeah and i forget which seeds are when but it'll tell you it's i've i've I'm past all that, but I've had a lot of young women say that it's very helpful. There's also a book, since we're kind of talking about this, called Woman Code, W-O-M-A-N, Woman Code. Mm -hmm. And it's a helpful book related to some of your menstrual and hormonal issues for women kind of 16 to, to 45 range, kind of that anywhere up to premenopausal. And then I listed, I think you can see, I listed some other things that are helpful for pain. CBD is actually very helpful for Stella too. I don't know if you've tried that yet, if you have any thoughts about that, but it can be very helpful. Yeah, it can be very helpful. The drinking ginger tea or turmeric tea, especially, you know, seven days, start drinking at seven days before, you know, your period's coming can be helpful. And then the other thing, if you do continue to take, anybody who's on birth control, I highly encourage you to make sure you're taking a multi B vitamin, the Bs, and folate, and magnesium, because the birth control will rob your body of those vitamins and minerals. Those, okay. And we need those, especially because they can, the Bs help with energy, most of them help with energy, but there's a few B vitamins that help to relax. Magnesium is a relaxer. Yeah. It relaxes our body. So that's done wonders for relaxed, me since I started taking magnesium. And it's amazing. I take yeah. like a whole Very bunch cool. of uh, vitamins now every day, and it's been yeah. so much more helpful. Yeah. Great. Now, again, because you've got some specific stuff, Priscilla, you might, I would, you know, run it by your doctor. But right. those are those are vitamins and minerals that shouldn't be a problem. But run it by your doctor since you've got specific stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But again, if any anytime I talk to a young woman who's on birth control, I really encourage them to get their B vitamins and magnesium. I've seen it help with anxiety. 
that people are dealing with and with the cramps. Magnesium is amazing for cramps. Maybe that's going to be your go-to <laughs> okay. to help you. Well, there's about 60 to 70% of us that are deficient in magnesium hmm. and it relaxes us. Calcium is a contractor. Magnesium relaxes. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. Start that's a lot to start with. Yeah. <laughs> Good, tips. Good question. And the reason I brought the reason I brought up over counter pain meds in the first place is because they're great for pain, but they also break down and tear up our stomach lining if used too too many too many times, especially if you use it daily or fairly weekly. They start to mess up with your stomach. So I try to only use them. If you only have to use it once a month or something, that's that's okay. Okay. Any other questions? Deb, did any come through that you saw? Or, or anybody just want to pop in since we're a smaller group? We can. No, I hadn't had any anybody men mention any questions they specifically had. Um, but you have your email in there, so I feel like um, people can like reach directly to you. And if you're in the fine comp, uh, mm -hmm. stuff is in the fine comp here community, so you can connect with Donna there. Um, if you, um, Priscilla, uh, Jessica, are interested in the fine comp here community, I have a link in there. Um, I'll put it again in there. Um, if you guys have questions, please let us know. Um, and contact uh, myself or Donna and we'll help you if any questions you have. I'm doing calls over the weekend um, for anybody who has questions about FineCom here and the community that um, Steph and Donna and I are in. Cool. Um, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much, Donna. Uh, uh, technical issues aside, I think I really enjoyed it and uh, learned a lot. I'm going to do some research. Uh, I put some links in the chat for people. Uh, you can save the chat uh, as a reference if you want with the three dots, uh, and then it'll um, it'll say save chat. Uh, so you can do that uh, for resources going forward. Um, if you guys do have questions that come up later, you can certainly reach out to us. And our next event uh, is next Saturday at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And then it's going to be a Finding Calm with Breathwork with uh, Dr. Amy. She's going to come on. She's from Arizona. Uh, she will have a little bit of a demonstration as well, kind of similar to Donna's um, structure of event. We're doing a little different of events or a little bit more interactive, like, um, Instead of a conversation, we're actually doing some actions with you. So that's what, that's been really fun. So, uh, cool. Uh, any any other thoughts, feedback, Donna? Anything else anybody wants to share? Good. Cool. All right. Well, I hope it made sense. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> yeah. I I thank you so much, Donna, for your time. Thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully, we'll see you in another fun calm here event. Uh, have a great afternoon. Okay, you guys can all wave bye as you leave and say bye. bye. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. It. Bye. Have a great bye. weekend. Bye.